Hello everyone, it's Arthur and welcome to this new video. Today, I just got an Intel Xeon E5 2630v4 engineering sample. This CPU cost me $50 on AliExpress and has 10 cores and 20 threads. As you can see, it's a Xeon V4, so it's the Broadwall E architecture with the 14 nanometer process, which is a big jump from the 22 nanometer process that we had with the Xeon V3, for example. If you don't know what an engineering sample CPU is, I will soon release a video explaining the multiple versions of a CPU before its retail version. To be quick, it's a better E5 2630v4 with a lower clock speed. And indeed, this CPU has a base clock of 2.1 GHz instead of 2.2 for the retail, but it can only boost up to 2.5 GHz instead of 3.1 for the retail. Hence, its turbo boost on all cores, which you'll have all the time in games, is 2.3 GHz, which is not a lot by today's standards and even back in 2016 when it released. Let me also remind you that Xeons are not made for gaming. This CPU has a TDP of 85 watts, which is the same as the Xeon E5 2620v3, and it has a massive 25 megabytes of cache. Little information about Xeon E5 v4 CPUs. Firstly, they cannot be turbo boost unlocked, like the version 3, and secondly, the engineering samples E5 v4 are not compatible with every motherboard, especially the Chinese ones. I tried it on the Machinist X99Z, didn't work, the Machinist X99500 didn't work, and I tested it with the Cleesray X99 Dual, which there'll be a video soon about it, and it worked! So I'm using a dual socket motherboard with one CPU. That's really lame. All right, now we will benchmark this CPU and see what it can do in six games and its workstation performance in four softwares. We'll use the 1080p resolution, 32 gigabytes of 2133 MHz in dual channel, max RAM speed for this CPU, and a GTX 1080 Ti overclocked. Oh, and we'll compare this CPU against my Ryzen 7 3700X, 8 cores at 4.1 GHz, and to my E5 2620v3, which has 6 cores at 3.2 GHz. First benchmark, Cinebench of 15. We got a score of 1206, which is not that bad, but not that great too. The 3700X got 2089, and the 2620v3 got 956. In Cinebench R20, this CPU did this benchmark at 1.8 GHz, which is below base clock. Of course, I checked the temperature, updated the drivers, but nothing happened. This CPU got stuck at 1.8 GHz and I still don't know why. This happened only with Cinebench R20 though. The score is 2191 and this is really bad for such a CPU. The Ryzen 7 got 4600 and the 2620v3 got 2211. In CPU-Z now, the V4 got 291 in single thread and 3556 in multi-thread, the 3700X got 508 in ST and 5346 in MT, the 2620v3 got 342 in ST and 2613 in MT. And this is actually a decent result. You can clearly see that the Cinebench on 20 results are problematic as the 2630v4 is way better than the 2620v3 in multi-thread. Finally, for workstation, here's a Vegas Pro render. I used the 1 minute 1080p 30fps video that I needed to encode without NVENC, which means no help from the GPU. The 2630v4 did this in 1 minute and 42 seconds, the 3700X did it in 51 seconds, and the 2620v3 did it in 1 minute and 22 seconds. Far Cry 5 Ultra Preset 1080p, the 3700X got a massive 115 FPS, while the 2630v4 got only 79, and the 2620v3 got 95. Assassin's Creed Odyssey now, ultra high preset 1080p, thank you so much newer games for having been optimized for shitty CPU frequencies. The 3700X got 70 FPS and the 2630V4 actually got 66, which is not that bad, and the 2620V3 got 67 FPS. I tested Ghost Recon Wildlands at Ultra, but this game is so GPU bound that the three CPUs got 75 FPS average. I then tested Ghost Recon Breakpoint at Ultra with Vulcan, and the same thing happened. 
26 turn 3v3 got 113, 3700x got 114, and 2630v4 got 112. Thank you, Vulcan. Note that this game is more recent than Wildland, with way better graphics, and the performance jump is massive. Congratulations, Ubisoft. The Division 2 with DX11 at Ultra Preset, the 3700X got 96 FPS average, the 2630v4 got 87, and the 2620v3 got 92. DX12 would have probably dropped the FPS difference, but I remember having a lot of crashes with DX12 with this game, so I don't use it anymore on it. And finally, our old GTA 5 with custom settings, the 3700X got 144 FPS average, the 2630V4 got 130 FPS average, and the 2620V3 got 135. These results are kinda disappointing. I was expecting better from the CPU, especially for productivity. Let's remind you that the retail version had a max turbo boost of 3.1 GHz, so we can guess that its all course turbo boost was around 2.6 to 2.7 GHz, which is just 500 MHz more. And this CPU used to cost over $600 in 2016. We can definitely see how we've improved thanks to AMD in the past 4 years. Now to conclude this video, should you purchase this CPU for $50? And my answer is, you should really, really not purchase it. It's hardly compatible with Socket 2011 3 boards, it has a really low clock speed, and hence has really bad performance for the price. If you want to stick with Dion CPUs, just grab a 2620v3 or 2678v3, which are way better than this engineering sample CPU. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe, it will really help me. It was Arthur.